All right, so I'm going to get started. My name's Samantha Reese. So I'm the director of the Australian Apartment Advocacy, and I'm delighted to have Kath and Wendy here today with us uh, to talk about harmonious communities. Is there such a thing as a harmonious community within an apartment building? I say yes, and the good news is that um, Kath and Wendy also say yes. And so um, Kath uh, community came across my books um, a couple of years ago, they entered our awards program for the People's Choice, which is for those uh, committees who actually then uh, think that they're doing award-winning stuff, which in this instance with Kath's uh, committee, they were. And Wendy came to my attention because we've just finished a grant with the City of Sydney, where we had to create the education kit. And one of those books was about harmonious communities. And uh, Wendy and Urco Apartments were actually published in the book, as was Kath and City Towers. So uh, welcome both of you ladies. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very Thank you. much. <laughs> now I'm just going to quickly run through a couple of things. So the um, Australian Apartment Advocacy is the voice of 2.5 million people who choose to live in an apartment. And uh, we do a variety of things in case you weren't aware, education, advocacy, lobbying government, and we do research. And so uh, Certainly we, are, well, I've become known as the Aaron Brockovich of apartments. I prefer the apartment ombudsman. Um, we now have <coughs> got uh, education kits in Victoria, New South Wales, WA and Queensland. And the awards that we were talking about while started in WA will also be rolled out over the next 12 months in the other states, which is awesome. So I guess, as I mentioned, uh, Kath and Wendy, and so the ERCO team are on the left-hand side. This is one of the images that's actually included in our education kit. And on the right is um, Kath with also Catherine Leeser, who was um, also a resident of the committee um, of, of the building and two of our politicians actually accepting the awards um, on the night the last couple of years ago. So, um, Kath and Wendy, this, I'm going to kind of run through what we consider to be a criteria for harmonious communities. And we'll quickly touch on your buildings and then I'll come back to you and actually ask you which of these elements kind of like speak to you and, um, and why. Okay. So, um, obviously, you know, when you're living as a vertical street, um, and in fact, you're often in a much more kind of like, I guess, squeezy space than if you were actually on a street. There's a variety of things that you really do need to make sure that you actually uh, reflect as individuals and hence as a community, right? So community spirit in terms of being inclusive, tolerant, actually having ongoing social interaction to actually make a community because a community does not make itself on its own, right? Owner participation, so making sure that um, your owners are proactive and involved. I hate situations where you attend an AGM and you've got five people out of 115 apartments there. You know, that's not being active, that's not being involved. Um, community leadership, so the committee are focused on the best outcomes for its community and building. There's no person um, jacking the situation to try and get what they want. It's all about the whole community. Financial security in terms of having adequate budgets and reserves, clear rules and guidelines, you know, because you need to know what are the rules of living within my community. And especially lately in terms of renovations, I've had a lot of people calling me and asking what are the rules and guidelines about renovations. And of course, your rules and bylaws are certainly the number one thing that you should be looking at. Proactive and transparent, especially with big decisions. Um, collaboration with experts because the apartment sector is complex. You know, like um, not everybody's a specialist in the apartment sector, especially, you know, when it comes to building management or building inspections or painting or, um, you know, kind of like engineer works. So you do need to get your experts in. And effective meetings, you know, an action fest, not a talk fest, right? I hate meetings where you come out of and the only decision that you've made is that you need to have another meeting. That for me <laughs> is not a decisive meeting. So Wendy, we'll get you to kick us off. Tell us about Urco. How old is your building, darling? Uh, yeah, so our building's seven years old and um, 263 lots, but one of them is a cafe. So we're really lucky down on the corner of our building is a cafe, which is quite, um, adds a lot of warmth and heart to the community. Um, 
and uh, I think it's helped, uh, especially in COVID. You know, it's just a little gathering point. People see everyone they know when they're getting their coffee, have a chat. So it helps a lot with community cohesion to have your little local shop or your local cafe. Yeah, I think so mm. too. Mm. And what do you think makes you, that's a lot of lots, 262 yeah. plus one cafe. Um, what <laughs> makes you unique, you know, because trying to corral 260 people to make an agreement, like that could, that could be anybody's worst nightmare, right? Um, yeah, I guess um, uh, people people weren't weren't always that we were fairly typical in the beginning. I think everybody was sort of had goodwill, but not necessarily want to talk to each other. Um, but I think um, having uh, leadership from our strata committee who were not riding their own pony, you know, they're just uh, they're quite calm and uh, they just talk through things. And I think that pervades how everyone deals with each other. Um, so yeah, I think that that unique. Just having a conversation that even if it's difficult, if you have to, you know, ask for something that you think, oh, everyone will hate it. And people don't. You just ask it. You put it out there. The worst that happens is people will say no. So I think that um, it's, it's you know, we're unique in having that conversation across the whole of all of the um, the three buildings that are, are, make up our complex. Hmm. So no ego, right? So when you actually are talking about yeah. the best thing for your community, if someone says no, there's no, you know, hurt mm. feelings in that whole equation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be yeah. grumpy about it at the time, but you just think, I'll just have to let it go. We all have, still have to live together. Yeah. So um, it's not that there haven't been some blow-ups. Certainly been some blow-ups. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they say, you know, storming, forming, norming, right? You have to kind of like, you know, yeah. go through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And COVID kind of made us repeat all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, Kath, I'll go to you. So tell us, how old is your building? Oh, we're at the other end of the spectrum. We're 35, 36 years old and we've only got 64 apartments so I'm a little bit jealous because we have to really we have to really work on our budgets and make sure that this beautiful old building that has got hints of art deco characters through it that we um, we well we had to build it up because it had been run down quite a bit and and uh, and to you know enhance the beauty of this beautiful building and and we find that most of the people who we talk to uh, love the building that they live in they moved in because of this this really lovely old old sort of art deco building and what do you think makes you unique what's your what's your feelings about this um we've we've had we've we've had to do a lot of work when we when i first came here seven years ago there was definitely not a lot of harmony in the building and there were a lot of conflicting opinions and um quite a few decisions being made for the single not for the not for the group you know not for all the owners so that was a very interesting scenario i can say with confidence run a series of surveys that have all um, they've all grown on each uh, they've taken the, the last survey and then enhanced that and delved deeper and we really looked at the ethos of the building so we didn't just look at oh we have to spend eight hundred thousand dollars in the next 10 years to do all of these practical jobs it was also looking at well, what sort of lifestyle do you want in the gardens? And and is this a quiet place? Is this a family place? Is this a barbecue place? What sort of gardens do you want? And we came out with some really clear guidelines about what the owners wanted, which has informed our decisions a great deal moving forward. And it does it does create a lot better harmony because we have that clear guideline now for decisions that we're making. That's really awesome. And I do agree that, you know, if you want to actually ask your community what they want, the best way to actually do that is actually ask them. And the idea of that kind of, um, you know, like the uh, surveys or as you talked about, you know, actually even knocking, door knocking, you know, good old fashioned door knocking to say, and I think that's the right question, you know, what experience do you want to have in this community garden and I think it's important that if you've got families that they don't feel ostracized right mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a strong sense sometimes that you know if you're of a, a different culture or if you're a family that sometimes you know that tolerance is not there and we do need to make sure that um, everybody's voice 
account, yep. right? And it does help with those bigger decisions also when you have to do things like paint the building or like we have to do, we have to replace all of our um, balcony perspex. Um, because everybody or the majority, the clear majority wanted to maintain the look of the building and would prefer like for like, but with modern attributes, we get again, the decision has been taken out of some of the, the choices that we give people because we've already got that direction, which does help for those talk fests that you do get in some meetings. <laughs> Good on you. So Wendy, looking back at these kinds of criteria for a harmonious community, which of these do you think kind of like strike a chord with you with ERCO? Um, we've definitely got the inclusivity and um, tolerance and um, uh, uh, social interaction, I think, going well. We were a little bit lucky in that um, when the apartments opened, the developer held monthly barbecues and they were professionally put on, so beautiful food. We had a little trio of music and they held them in the garden. So that got everybody talking to each other. It kicked us off really well. And then we tried to sort of keep that going with different events ourselves and barbecues ourselves. Um, so people learn to talk to each other instead of on the Facebook page. We have our own Facebook page instead of, you know, who the hell has got that dog that's barking? It would be, <laughs> oh, hi, neighbours. You know, there's a bit of barking going on. Does someone's dog need walking? Can I help? That sort of thing, uh, which is a sort of conversation that doesn't happen overnight. Um, but they, we've developed that kind of, um, I guess, tolerance and giving people the benefit of the doubt. Um, is, is quite a good thing. Um, leadership, um, just harking back to that if you've got direction on what people want, I think that's a really good point. Um, our treasurer isn't, afa isn't afraid to sort of be dispassionate about things like money, which can be very touchy because not everybody's in the same situation. Um, so he will just show his reasoning and, you know, if people say yes and vote for it, great. And if they don't, they're not. Again, just, you know, Tolerance, just having um, a, a good, being able to uh, communicate with each other, I think is um, the thing that rings through for me. And we are lucky, we are fairly in a fairly good financial position because of the area that we live in and the people who own um, our buildings, not too old. Um, we've been able to work through defects and get a lot of things um, done without too much expense for ourselves. But in the future, we've got quite a few big expenses coming up, uh, like electric vehicle charging and you know, the painting of the huge buildings that we've got is going to be expensive, things like that. So we do have to be really careful that we do budget for it and that we ask people for money early on through the years, not wait until it's a great big horror story and then say, oh, by the way, <laughs> there's a big levy coming. <laughs> yeah. And what I like about yours, went your group, Wendy, was that if you actually had a massive change in the budget or there was something that was going up, that your treasurer would actually make a, a public meeting. So if people actually wanted to come and talk to you, talk to them about questions and that kind of thing, but not do it in a public forum, that was yeah. then available to them. And I thought that was, you know, that's about preemption, right? If you know that something yeah. might be a sticking point, well, yeah. you know, put it out there and allow yourself to be open to dialogue yeah. um, mm. because not everyone's going to feel comfortable bringing it up at the AGM. Yeah, that transparency is really good. We don't ever have to worry too much about um, that kind of thing because we're, we're upfront. If it's not good for the community, if it's not the right thing, then you know our our strata committee won't do it. So if they, if they if they want to do something or propose that an amount of money needs to be spent, we're all upfront about it because we really believe that that's what needs to be done for the building. And um, he's quite happy to take questions because he wants people to understand what he's doing. Um, and we'll just do it on a Sunday afternoon in the garden. You know, come drop down. I'll just just be here having a coffee. Anyone can drop in and have a chat. Um, but most of the time, he's very good at just doing a little one-page explanation or half-page explanation that we put on uh, Facebook or something like that or email to the owners uh, so they know exactly what's going on. And I think there's been a trust built up as well. We, we show that we're not wasteful. We've shown several circumstances where we've saved money um, because of work and consultation and using our community. And so because they know that we're not just spending, 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 um, then people will put up with it. They Obviously, nobody ever likes having their... Um, uh, levies increased, um, but people sort of generally will go along with it. They realise it's for the good of the building and that, yeah, we don't want to have a big fright later on. Hmm. Yeah, good one. Um, Kath, when looking at these kind of criteria, what do you think strikes a chord with you? I, I love the analogy about the dog barking and offering to yeah. take it for a walk. I thought that was, that's excellent. And you're, and you're right, it's that 
you know someone, you've spoken to them, you've had a coffee next to them. So the confrontational manner in which people can speak to each other um, is, is dissipated somewhat. And, and mm. I think that was a great example. De uh, definitely that community spirit and the owner participation. The owner participation I found to be the absolute um, gold in our building. It, it very much used to be Strata Council and the rest of the owners and anything that was done, it was Strata Council and there, and it, it was, um, yeah, just, it was just them and us. And so we have worked very, very hard at getting our owners to be involved in projects. And we've had so much work to do because this is an older building and a lot of a lot of trades don't actually even know how to service some of the things in this building because they're they were built when some of the tradies weren't even born. So so we we have some we have a lot of projects that require time for the Strata Council to look at. So we we um, have project lists of must-haves and what the Strata Council are working on. And then we're having the nice-to-haves. And you'll guarantee that everything that owners want to get done in the building are the nice-to-haves, not the must-haves. <laughs> they, they, they don't give a damn about the generator, but they really, really want to have that beautiful garden or the pool resurfaced or whatever. So we make it very clear to our owners that we're focusing on the must-haves and we need volunteers for the nice-to-haves and we call them our STAG, S-T-A-G, short-term action groups and volunteer owners or even residents um, form these groups and we, we oversee them but then they actually run with that idea. So we've got two groups running at the moment. The one is for the pool refurbishment and the other one is for the exterior design, which is, it's going to be very, very long-term and very expensive, but they've had design architects come in, design the gardens, design the pool area, um, design uh, the barbecue and meeting places. And now they're having a pop-up they're all, they've organised for Saturday morning a pop-up information session so that they can share this information with all the other owners and they can start making some decisions on these long-term designs. So the owner participation is pure gold as far as I'm concerned. They, yeah. they get things done. That's exciting, Kat, to actually think about all those things that you're doing in your uh, community. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us, have you ever experienced any disharmony in an apartment community, and maybe not necessarily the one you're currently in? And what does that do to the residents? You know, and how did you did you broker an outcome? I know, Kath, that yours kind of came to a head with your Strata Council. Yes, you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, it was um, it 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 was a very difficult time, and that was that was probably more. Um, political than we are experiencing now. Now we, uh, if we have problems in the building, it's more that, <clears throat> excuse me, it could be disharmony between a civil problem or something between two, you know, two tenants. Um, and, and we've got, we've got those those sort of uh, processes nicely tuned. But this one was a little bit different where um, I got onto council, but they were very, very, um, reluctant to change the manner in which they they were doing things and it did come to a head and it, and it was very difficult when you you have to go to an AGM and you've had to actually we had I had to go out and to meet owners and to talk about the situation and it, it is it isn't pretty when you have to do things like that to actually raise some issues that you feel strongly that are not for the long-term good of the the whole the whole building um, but I had good examples of where I felt that we could improve and we we formed a committee after that that was um, yeah that was a lot more in thinking with looking 10 years ahead not just six months ahead yeah and I think that's right because you know when you have to kind of like broker that situation you're right it's not pretty and having to go out and talk to other residents and actually be, empower them to then basically be involved in actually I guess in a way it was a bit of an overhaul of your committee um, mm. the way they were doing business but now that you've done that what's your feeling Kath was it worth the effort oh 
uh, yeah, there was um, there was a year of not very good sleeping <laughs> because it's your home and you're emotionally involved, and that's where it's very very different to being in a work situation. Mm. Uh, but uh, the the feedback that we're getting and just the we communicate we we probably over communicate but I would rather do that than under communicate and and like Wendy we've got the Facebook page we do lots of pop-up information sessions because I find that that one-on-one -on -one is really really good um yeah so so now we're getting you you know that you're doing well and, and you talked about the numbers at the AGM. You know you're doing well when the numbers at the AGM start dropping because people are quite happy and they're not coming <laughs> and they don't want to fight with you. <laughs> so we've sort of found that. We've found that people are very happy with our 10-year plan, the finances, and they feel like they've got a voice now as well. Yeah, and you're taking care of business. Mm. Wendy, what about you? Have, have you had any disharmony in your apartment community? You said you had yeah. kind of like ripper fights. Tell us about that. <laughs> um, yes, it's 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 the dogs. It's the dogs. We're a pet friendly um, community, and um, everybody loves the dogs. But people have different ideas about what dogs should be doing. Yeah. Um, so it has become quite heated sometimes because someone feels like you know that if they have their group of dogs out there and they're all barking and chatting at eleven o'clock at night, that that's fine. And there's a whole lot of people who, because we have all different ages, we've got families, people putting kids to bed, and they're saying. No, at eleven o'clock at night is not suitable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, and and people get really just absolutely off the chart offended, and um, I find with anything where people are getting really, really heated, it was all uh, mostly on Facebook. Um, I would just quietly message in the background and say, "Look, can I just have a chat and find out what your take on it is? You know, what do mm -hmm. you think?" And once you've had a little bit of a chat with them. You do sometimes get a little bit of an extra window um, as to their reasoning and also it gives you a chance to explain to them without, I think when they've got an audience, people are much more defensive. Mm. So being able to just have that chat to someone, um, we've had a guy on who was, um, I think somebody asked him to turn his music down and he was outraged. So I just fronted him in the car park and he's quite muscly and everything and I'm not very big. So You're it's, it's an advantage for me because <laughs> I'm not... Um, a threat. I'm not a threat, <laughs> not a threat. So I said, do you realize, and I often use the word aggressive. If I'm emailing people or writing to people or talking to them, I say, did you realize that's a bit aggressive? Oh, that's not aggressive. I wasn't being aggressive. And oh. they, they're really surprised to find that that's how they've come across, but they are, they're, you know, people are fearful because that person sounds aggressive. And so even if they sort of huff and puff a bit when they're talking to you, say, well, you know, those people should, blah, 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 um, they do go away and have a think and they do tend to settle. Um, but I do want to stress that those people who are the loudest and most people um, who live in groups would probably agree with this, um, they're the loudest and they're the noticeable, but they are the minority. I mean, we've got 600 plus people living here and everyone pretty much gets along, does their thing, does their recycling, you know, takes care of their dog. No problems at all. You just get an occasional few, but it tends to get a lot of focus um, and you can become very despondent because of those people being so uh, persistent. But um, I'd encourage people to just keep the conversation going. It doesn't have to be settled in one session. And I have had... Um, one conversation with a person who was really um, very, very narky, just always argumentative, putting terrible things on Facebook page and not being very friendly around the building. Um, that went on for a couple of months, just an ongoing back and forth conversation with him saying, well, I want proof and I want names. And me saying, well, I don't think you need proof or names. I think you know within yourself, you know, maybe just have a little think. I, I can't, you know, force you to do anything. So, you know, you, you just have to sort of persist a little bit and, you know, let them let them solve the problem themselves, I think, is, is a good way to do it. You like you're an like excellent a mediator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, she's just a big tap cat and they say, right, I've got to stop hearing from Wendy. I'll do, I'll behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. I think sometimes that is the key. <laughs> You're so just sweet too when you do it. <laughs> but I think that's the case is that once you say, if you say something once, it doesn't actually mean that they've heard you, right? They, you know, the whole idea is sometimes you have to repeat yourself five or six times before it actually sinks in so don't think yep. because they haven't actioned something you've asked the first time 
that in yeah. fact they haven't taken it on board it's just that they are still processing what you've asked right yeah. so yeah that's where that tolerance also comes into play mm. yeah great yeah mm. so um either of you can start this off but why is harmony important in a vertical community then well, from my point of view, we're, we're smaller than Wendy. I don't know what you're like, but you, you cross people's paths all the time. You, in the lifts, you're always seeing people. You're seeing them in the bin room. You're seeing them in the recycle room. You're meeting them at the letterbox. And it's far yeah. more, it's far more um, co community oriented because you're always seeing people face to face. And in yeah. saying that, you, you can see the same person seven times in one day and then not see them for six months, which is so weird. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it is uh, But you do, you do see oh, them and, and, uh, and, they, and you cross those paths. So um, there's nothing worse than having a, <clears throat> a very, sorry, I've got a bit of a tickle, um, that quiet lift ride with the person that you're not getting on with at the moment. It's, it's really not not a good feeling when you just, and the lift goes forever so I, I just think that for your, for, for your mental health it's lovely to be able to smile and wish someone a good day and feel like you're not being judged or you they're not angry with you and and so it does become quite personal I think in in a vertical community more so than if you walk down the street and at the same length and you're meeting your neighbors that way mm. I agree I agree but Wendy, Titus, your thoughts yeah uh, definitely um I think um you you really hit the nail on the head before when you said that you can solve problems much more easily uh when people have have a um I guess a pattern of being behaving more civilly to each other uh, when that's been laid out and displayed and people copy and anyone new that moves into the building immediately sees that they immediately feel it they immediately feel that we all talk to each other and that I better not be yelling at, it, at someone else that's not the way to do it um, I think also with COVID we had an awful lot of um, waste management to deal with there was so much stuff just a product from people setting up their home offices and everything. And um, so we set up all of our recycling programs a lot faster than probably um, mm -hmm. I would have wanted because it was quite exhausting. But um, the success of those programs was because we had um, people who uh, wanted to help. So the community spirit and also the um, sort of the gentle social pressure of, well, everyone else is doing it, so I should do it too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just everybody leading each other. Um, made that successful. So it's actually saved us quite a lot of money, like tens of thousands of dollars every year, mm. bringing in those programs. Um, but definitely, you know, life when you're in the, the a friendlier community is better and, and uplifting. And I'm, I'm a reasonably friendly person myself. So I quite like, some people don't want to have a chat, that's fine. You're just quiet in the lift together or whatever. But other people, um, just tonight was hilarious. Um, you know, we're having a joke, you're having a chat and you just you do feel uplifted after a hard day at work or whatever. Um, you just feel so much better because you've had a laugh with someone. It's mm. just fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah. And I and I feel, felt that during COVID, you, you brought up COVID there, that we, we made an effort for uh, people who were alone and their families were not able to see them because they were possibly interstate. Uh, we, we set up a buddy system in the building so that we ring them and say, g'day, how are you going? Do you need any milk today? Or I'm going down the street and I'm going to get a coffee would you like me to bring you back one? And that was that was really good, especially for our older, more vulnerable people, mm -hmm. that they felt like they were still included and they were not they were not just stuck in their apartments and mm -hmm. and like so mm -hmm. yeah, and that's gone on. That 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 is that has continued, not to the same degree, but it was that ability to just just check in on someone and that you know are you okay type moment uh, mm. was very good and there was one person that had actually helped because we were able to get them to hospital when they didn't think they needed to go but but it was just seen that they were in need of some extra help so yeah mm. it is important in the, these communities that you keep an eye on each other 
Yeah. Mm. And do you think it works the other way around, Kath, when it's not just the people who are receiving the help, but doing it yourself? I always encourage people to volunteer as much as possible, even just contributing a comment on Facebook or something, because I don't think people realise that when you do something, you feel great. You know, you yep. feel you've helped someone and people are thanking you. And even if it's a small thing, it's just a lovely lift in your life. And when you've got a lot of things bearing down on you, you need to do things that lift you all the time and fight against that that um you know pressure from outside that everything's a bit more of an effort um you know during COVID it was all everything was hard and so mm. you just need a lot of things in your life to say that's a nice thing to compensate for yeah. maybe a bit yeah. dark yeah definitely mm. feeling like you you you've done someone some good makes you feel mm. so good yeah yeah. But it's all about kindness, right? Random acts of kindness and caring. And and if you actually, if you lead with that, it's very hard for someone if they're grumpy to actually then, re, re, you know, retaliate in a negative way, right? So, yeah. and I think that what, what you're saying, Wendy, is like, it's all about, you know, showcasing the kind of behaviours that you want to see. And I think, you know, Kath mm -hmm. touched on it about, you know, instead of complaining about the dog, ask, you know, is there something that we can assist you with, you know? And, and that's a much nicer way of positioning it, you know, than... Yeah someone feeling like they've been ostracized or isolated because they've got that problematic dog, you know, yeah. and then those awkward um, pauses in the elevator can be avoided. <laughs> um, now, Kath, you, um, I'm just talking now about what initiatives have you implemented to help with your community? And I loved your STAG, your short-term action groups. Can you tell us a couple of, because um, I think you've had those, Wendy, but you probably haven't been so sophisticated to brand them. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, Kath, can you tell us a bit about what some of those STAG groups actually took care of? Oh, we, we've, um, oh, we've, we've accomplished so much. First of all, we, we do have a clear set of guidelines for the STAG. So we make sure that they've, they really understand what their position is and they read it and they sign it. And it's all about the finances. They can't make financial decisions, etc. So we, we just make sure that they understand what their role is. And so <clears throat> it started out with pets. We've got, um, hang on. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've got um, pets now in the building because we had the short term action group look at that. We had every foyer in the apartment building done plus the lobby. So a short term action group took that over, came up with all the designs, did all the research, did all the costings and brought that back to committee to vote on and also to the residents and owners to vote on. So we've done that. We've got the bin room has been fully remodeled and we've got all our recycling options and it's amazing how many people stand in front of the bottle top ones and and separate their bread ties and the and the <laughs> metal tops and the plastic tops and they chat to each other as they're doing that so we've got <laughs> we've got that area all set up and textile um, recycling book swap areas We've got the exterior, exterior stag group now that is up and running and that's doing a massive job because that's a very, very big project. And, oh, let me think, what else? Um, and you have events, so you have events, that, you know, you're a, an events group that organise events as well. So Yes, yes, we did, yeah. So we do, we haven't done as many this year because of COVID, but we were doing, um, as as you were, Wendy, we were doing regular catch-ups and drinks with, with um, people and... Um, yeah, that's all I can think of at the moment. But a lot of things that's achieved all. that. We, sorry, that's that's all. <laughs> but uh, things that we would never have achieved just with our Strata Council because we we don't have the capacity like yeah. anyone. You're volunteering, and you are. We're looking more at the budgets and the roofs and the the uh, the fire safety systems yeah. more so than the recycling bin room. And that's been a huge success. We've only got a little room, but people have so involved everyone got a food caddy um, bucket uh, given to them free of charge the council of owners bought that so now we've got the food waste as well and we've saved tons of of food waste going into landfill and we we give people those stats so that they're aware of how much their recycling is assisted in reducing things going into general landfill mm -hmm. That's good. And Wendy, you, what kind of like things have you done to oh, help with the community? I, I marvel at that organisation. <laughs> <laughs> I am in awe. <laughs> um, with our buildings, um, I, I, 
think it's a slightly different kind of a population. They do not want to be pinned down. They don't want to be in a help group or whatever. So we do a lot of light touch things. So it'll be if you can spare five minutes, 10 minutes. But of course, we know they'll spend more than that. And so we try and make a lot of tasks that anyone can do at any time. And if you're stuck because you had a family commitment or um, we've got quite a few people who are now upping their care factor for the rest of the family. Um, and so they're really time poor and a lot of people do seem to feel quite time poor. So we have lots of um, similar kind of um, initiatives as far as the recycling and things like that. Um, but uh, it is a lot more, you know, dip in when you can dip in. And we just spend a lot of time with supportive like flyers and posters and uh, Facebook posts encouraging people to do their bit. And um, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a lot less organised and the probably the biggest um, project that has come up that is a little bit more like you're talking about with the stags is the um, electric vehicle uh, project. And we have had one on solar as well to see if that worked with our building, uh, doing all of the costing and all of that kind of thing and working with council grants and that sort of thing. Um, so when it's yeah a heavier admin kind of a uh, project, then you do need a few people to ca carry the burden of the meetings and the paperwork and that sort of thing. Um, but for most of the other things that we've been doing, it's sort of just a loose bit of a loose group of whoever can turn up on the day to, um, you know, uh, hold the, the plant day or the barbecue or the book swap or um, I think they had a jewellery day one time as well. Wine afternoons, cake afternoons, it depends if all the, you find out if all the foodie people are available who love to cook <laughs> and bring things down. And you say, oh, look, just if you can, if you can, but you make sure it's the day when they can. <laughs> um, are you orchestrating those outcomes, Wendy? <laughs> She's a good leader. <laughs> I actually struggled in the early days and I still do struggle with asking people to do things because I just sort of beaver away at it. I'm a little worker um, and I just sort of beaver away at it, but I've had to really, um, uh, you know, it's just, there's just so, so much. It's such a big thing and communicating with so many people is difficult and we have some language barriers and things like that. So you really do have to spread the word around and get other people to do the communication for you and just try and get them to have lots of conversations because, um, even though we have signs in the lifts and things like that, um, you know, people tend to be, you know, on their phones, looking at their kids, looking at their dog. They're yeah. really not reading anything. So I tend to just sort of, you know, keep circulating all of the flyers mm. and things and try and make them interesting and filter them out with um, community, other external community event, events or what the council's got going and uh, so that there's some, something interesting to read so that then when I slip in, <laughs> something that's a bit more functional about the building, um, then that will just sort of be part of their natural uh, habit. I guess it's building the habit of trying to get yeah. people interested in reading what you want them to read because you can't talk to all of the people in the building. Um, so, yes, you have to get all of the people out there trying to have those conversations uh, on your behalf. Champions, I call them. And, yeah, you're <laughs> completely right. You need to delegate where you can. Um, so what would be your tip to our listeners today in terms of if you were going to start one thing, what would it be? I, I've got two things that are <laughs> really, really important. Um, I believe the secession planning for your council is is something that you need to be working on if you're looking at three to five year terms you need to be working on three years beforehand and so one of the things that we've been doing is having every six months a succession planning meeting so getting in any people um that may be interested in joining the council, especially new owners are great to get in. And we we share information, we bring them to the meeting room, we show them how we do things, we talk about Strata Council, we ask them what their strengths are, what they do for a job, we we find out what their passions are, and we, we start that conversation years before we're going to actually hook them into actually coming onto council. And that has been really successful really successful because we've started the thought process in their heads immediately and the other thing that I really uh, would it's a very simple thing but I would uh, recommend any strata councils to always allow 15 minutes in your meeting for 
owners or residents to be able to do a presentation to you about something that they are not happy with, they're happy with, they'd like, et cetera, et cetera. We always ask for the information to be provided to us before the meeting. So we're able to have a really good read of it and we're across. So they don't have to spend the time on presentation. We can just start the discussion immediately. But that has been a very good um, resource for nipping large problems in the bud. It, it's been they've people have raised things that we've thought well we we had no idea about that and we've talked about it we've come up with an action plan and uh, and then moved forward and it has been really successful. Mm, excellent, Kath. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, that's, that's that's brilliant. I love that that setup. That's fantastic. Mm. Um, I've got two as well. <laughs> um, the main one about the community, so looking outward, is that um, just tell people how great and helpful they are until yeah. they become great and helpful and just really provoke that reality, which is the reality that most people are fantastic and doing the right thing. Don't, you know, just remain relentlessly positive and don't be too, um, don't let the, the um, little fails or little down part, parts um, of your, your community life get, get you, um, set you back. Um, yeah. Just you know, keep moving forward in a positive way because most people are with you and they might just not be vocal about it. Uh, mm. But they all, of course, everybody wants to live in a good community. They will all do their little bit. Um, they'll just do it quietly sometimes and you don't always know you've got their backing, but they are there. Otherwise, it would be Armageddon in a building this size, I can tell you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also, I think um, we did touch on a little bit before about your strata committee. Um, we, you have quarterly meetings, obviously. We have meetings in between those quarterly meetings because getting everybody organised and getting all your information um, and all your back and forth conversation with your residents, with your strata committee, getting all your information before the meeting is crucial to the meeting running well. Because you, if everybody turns up to meetings and they're just awful, then no one's going to have any confidence in your strata committee and you're not going to have confidence yourself. Whereas if you've had discussions between yourself and worked out expenses, worked out what, what could be possible, some um, hoops that you might need to get through or some um, problems that might need to be resolved, then when you talk about it in front of other people and other residents, you can be really rational and relaxed about it because you've mm. got, had a robust process of checking all of your facts, making sure that you're right, that you're not making assumptions that you shouldn't be making. And that's where it's good talking to residents because they'll say, oh, but we never do that or we always do that. And they give you a whole other insight into whatever it is, whatever project that you're going forward with or whatever expense that you want to put to the community. Um, so that I think is a really good um, process to have in place. Mm. That's excellent. And I agree with that because I think it's like a positive reinforcement, isn't it? You know, like if you're saying to someone, thank you so much, you're being so helpful, then it's just, it reinforces to them that they should keep doing what they're doing, a bit like a Pavlov's dog situation, right? So, yeah. And you say, you know, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're so, especially people, if you're having a problem with someone, you say, you know, you're so, um, you know, understanding, you know, you're so patient. And they might not be at all, but when you say, <laughs> oh, it's great of you to be patient, you know, thank you for that then the onus is on them then to, to be to patient. <laughs> very smart, Wendy, very smart. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> so, and I think, Kath, you know, now I now I know when people say to me, oh, I've moved to City Towers and they're already talking to me about being on the committee. I can <laughs> see why they're saying that. <laughs> 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 people you just get in there while you can oh i so never funny. let a chance go by i'm in the lift and i and i haven't met that person before oh hi where do you live what are you doing what are your different job what are your strengths <laughs> <laughs> impromptu interview yeah. <laughs> so looking back ladies on what you've done is there anything that you would have done differently or you know was there a light bulb moment where you thought yes or you know like this was what it was meant to be i i think for me it was definitely the way we asked our owners what they wanted that we we we'd gone in you know i'm very project management based so you know fact is a fact and you've got a timeline and everything and 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 stepping back and looking at that whole ethos of of where they're living what they enjoy changed the our trajectory um 
it hasn't changed what we're going to do, but it has changed the way we're going to do it. And um, I, I think that's been very beneficial for myself personally, and also the owners and residents who who want to live in in a community and they want to live in a in something that they feel like they've had been part of creating. Mm, I agree, Kath. Yeah, Wendy. Uh, for me, originally, when you come up with all these great ideas of things you'd like to do and you're getting help from people, um, you, you launch out and you're doing this great big thing and uh, maybe it's not quite as successful as you thought it was going to be. And so now that I've been doing things for a few year, years, I find that the people that I want to pitch to are the people who are not interested. So mm -hmm. even though you're gathering around you the people who are interested to help you do whatever it is, launch a recycling project or, you know, um, uh, bring in some new idea into the building. It's actually the disinterested people that you want to reach because if you aim for them and you talk to them, you get a lot more, uh, a lot better feedback about how you can make it work. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're only talking to interested people or hearing a lot of positive things, you're not really being very thorough in the way that you launch any of your programs. So they won't succeed as well. And we've doubled our efficiency by thinking slightly differently about people who don't have mobility, don't have um, all the, you know, the finance or the resources that some of us have. And if we make sure that we remove any hurdles for those people, then they will join in. And um, for example, the food scraps program that we had, we were running at about just over 50%, I think, when Council launched it. It was a great launch, really a lot of community feeling. Um, but we had to think about how we get the other half of the people. And we did mm. manage to do that overnight. We basically doubled uh, so that we are running at, you know, quite a high percentage now of people who participate in that. And they just had no inclination at all before. But you make it easy, deliver things to their door, help them, um, you know, whatever it takes to just get them going on something. Um, that's That was the, the key for me. Hmm. So leadership and reinforcement and then not giving up. I can <laughs> take up. Just your Wendy, your chant mantra. So um, it's been a very interesting session. I've, I've actually really enjoyed actually hearing the way that you actually obviously engage with your residents, you know, the importance that you put on to what they're saying. And I think that's, you know, people want to feel valued. If they feel valued in a community, then they'll contribute more, right? Yeah. So um, before yeah. we kind of like wrap this up, is there any last words that you have that you would like to share with um, the greater community? Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> we got one. I think um, the difficult conversation piece, I think, is is the one that's, it's really awkward. It all sounds great. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. But then you've got to actually go on and talk to people and talk to a person. Yeah. But I think just be relaxed about it. Don't worry too much if it comes off well or not well, because you do get better the more time you spend doing it. Um, and generally, I found that things I thought would be really difficult haven't been difficult. Um, just broach whatever you think, talk to lots of people, get get another person to go with you to do whatever it is. Uh, and a lot of the time, it's just not, not um, the big... I guess drama or the big hurdle that you thought it was going to be. So yeah, don't be don't be afraid of it. Feel relaxed about it, and just have a go. What have you got yeah. to lose? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very very important to have to have that go. One of the things that we 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 try to do is to not send a breach letter or something immediately. Yeah. We and and this is where it's very hard. Uh, um, we, we, we choose at our meeting who is going to go and talk to that person, but we always try to make sure that we have that one-on-one -on -one conversation to begin with. Mm. And yeah, it, it, it is tough to have it, but I tell you what, it stops, it stops that problem or it stops the letter in its tracks where if someone gets a breach letter, they, they, you know, they arc up and then yeah. you've got anger to deal with after that. So yeah. it's a lot easier to sometimes swallow your pride a little bit and go and have that conversation with someone mm -hmm. than it is to just use the strata manager. And so I, I'd recommend, again, communication and trying to form the relationships, even with the prickly people, because 
there's there's people in our building who have lived here for 30 or 30 odd years and you know and they like the way things were done before <laughs> and they not they're not understanding why we're doing all these big projects but we just keep on talking with them and and seeing and making sure that we're we're taking them along on the journey even if they they complain a, a bit on the way <laughs> NIMBY's in your own apartment building, darling. <laughs> well, I think that's been awesome, Kathy and Wendy, because I think, you know, you're just two lovely ladies who have a passion for creating change within your community, for involving people in your community and for doing the best thing for your community. And if every, you know, committee um, had that kind of um, interest and that kind of focus, I certainly would do myself a pretty much out of a job. Um, so I, I'm very grateful and we'll, we'll go to questions very shortly. Just quickly, we've got some other events coming up. So next week we're looking at environmental initiatives and apartments. On the 18th of October, we're looking at EV stations. There you go, Wendy, what's happening into the future. And then on the 20th of October, we're looking at mold and its health impacts, because we all know with the weather that we're experiencing and which we're going to continue to experience, mold is going to be an issue. So um, from anybody else who's actually in the room today with us, um, is there anybody who'd like to ask a question? If you would like to, you're welcome to do the chat or otherwise just unmute yourself and ask a question of Kath or Wendy. I'm just waiting to see if there's a message that comes up. Otherwise, we've obviously had a few people drop out because of um, the change of timing and we did originally have 27, so registered, but um, they will be receiving a copy of the recording anyway um, once we have finished this. So I just wanted to say, it looks like everybody has uh, become more the wiser, thanks to you, uh, Wendy and Kath, with your feedback. I'd just like to thank our sponsors who obviously um, help us to keep doing what we're doing. And certainly um, we appreciate the fact that we have these excellent kind of committees in our um, actual communities already um, and that I can call upon, which is really awesome. Otherwise they'll just think that you're a unicorn um, <laughs> to actually uh, share with us what you're doing and to spread the word so we can have this kind of happen across you know the nation that's really what i want right so the thing is it's possible it can be done it just requires thinking slightly outside the box correct and and yeah. um i just like to say thank you sam to you because this has been a massive learning curve for me over the last few years and without organizations such as yours the australian apartment advocacy and without your driving force i i I've learned so much from you and your organisation and from a lot of other people. So thank you very much. I, I do appreciate what you do. Thank yeah, same you. for me. It's it's great just meeting other people. And I've already been cribbing ideas from Kathy and I. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, and just the introductions that, you know, from the uh, things we've been to together and things like that, it just is great as far as inspiration and finding other ways to do things. It just really is good to get out of your own space and see what other people are doing. And it's um, it gives you just so many great ideas. I really appreciate it. So yeah, top work. Great, it's nice to be inspired, isn't it? And um, it's nice to actually know that you're not alone as well, ladies. So yes. there you go. Yes. So, <laughs> you're both championing change and um, I'm right beside you. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope that everybody who's uh, joined us has enjoyed the session as much as I have. I certainly um, appreciate your enthusiasm and uh, thank you very much. So um, good evening and uh, hopefully we'll catch each other soon. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye now.